Welcome back to the podcast. Podcast. I am Mr. Made Over. And I am Mrs. Made Over. That's what's up for that long intro. Oh, um, my bad. I keep uh, forgetting. I think we left off at a uh, gender role type of uh, event. Oh, we yeah, we did. That. What um, happened, honey? Um, I will play the <laughs> clip. Coco, go get you a pillow and lay right there. Come here, boop. Come here. Go get your pillow and blanket and come in here and lay down. You want to get your pillow and blanket come lay down? What in? What are you doing? Huh? I'm coming with you right now. <laughs> See? Gender roles. <laughs> <laughs> Can I finish the podcast f- podcast first? Why am I asking my boy? Man, go lay down. I've been in a minute. A little bit. About 30 minutes. Girl, go lay down. I've been there about 30 minutes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just watch Ryan. <sighs> Yes, go ahead. Revelation. Your relationship. So that's what happened last time. Yeah. Uh, All of that right there. A gender role had to be in place. So um, we are back. First of all, I want to say happy Thanksgiving. Because uh, this will be dropping on Thanksgiving Day What are Day. you thankful for? What um, are you thankful for? Uh, I just want to say <laughs> that I know 2020 has been a, 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 a heavy year for some And I just want to say that Man, continue to be grateful Continue to Man, push That's all I can say is, is really push it's, it's I know around about this time You know, you 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 were looking for that certain person to be at the edge of the table or end of the table mm-hmm. or uh I just I just feel a lot of the uh weight. The weight of stuff. But man all of y'all are in my prayers. Um just just be encouraged on this um Thanksgiving. I know it's it's unusual, it's it's different from any other Thanksgiving. And um it's trying time for y'all. I know it is. But, it's a uh, trying time for you too. You went through a lot. Yeah, but there's not, I guess the difference between me is that um I've learned to I've learned to my, my own coping mechanism. Yeah. And I have great support around me who I actually use. And, you know, I, I voice my opinion of I'm not doing good today or um do you need to do? <laughs> um, uh, or today's just not today for the most part. I rarely had those days for the most part, but when I do, I, he has moments. We talked know, about that. Yeah, but I just, I feel it. You know, feeling the atmosphere. I, I, I know it's gonna be heavy throughout this whole process from Thanksgiving to the rest Christmas of the year. Yeah. to you know, bringing in New Year, man. Mm-hmm. It's it's. It's heavy, yeah. Just let y'all know we, you mean you, you are in our prayers. But this is this will be part two of um, gender roles. Before I proceed, did you want to say anything? I mean, you people? like you said everything. You know saying, like no. you said no, seriously. You did. You said a whole mouthful. I think enough for me and you. But um, I wouldn't be me if I didn't have a comeback. <laughs> it's a rebuttal. <laughs> Um, no, but just, I mean, everything that, uh, Mr. Mo said, and just to follow up is it has been a very tough year and especially with COVID. Um, and a lot of people have lost loved ones. So this Thanksgiving will look different. 
um, for a lot of people, some COVID related, some non COVID related. Um, I know a lot of people cancer is, is, is one of the other things that I keep hearing that a lot of people are passing from. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we both know people, uh, that, um, battle with cancer and our survivors um or that still have it mm -hmm. um and then we have lost some people um close to us that um you know that was diagnosed with cancer so it just it's gonna look different yeah regardless so this season um i think for us we just did not get into the um what do you call it the rhetoric of yeah of like yeah, thanksgiving yeah so um because it's looking different for us we had to embrace it in a different manner um and we've already I, i'm just gonna say we already started mama santa and daddy santa <laughs> gifting our girls just so they know that um they are important and rel rev uh what is it reveling in that um in that arena so don't like just because that tomorrow is um or today is thanksgiving mm -hmm. um don't look for the best in it i guess you could say it's gonna be it's going to be tough for some of us yeah. but um know that there are people in your corner and i think that's what we we've, we've been able to deal with throughout this whole time because 2020 does not look like anything we all imagined it would look and we yeah. still really don't we're going into 2021 without really knowing what that is going to look if like either is, you know if it's going to get better or right or yeah so it's it's just day day by day like just take it day by day um and find people that um are supportive that encourage you um and that don't pull you back to old habits or old vices yeah. find people to uplift you in these moments so, so um I, I i've been thinking on how to come back into this gender role you know being that we had a role of a gender that needs to be played um but um i figured we didn't want to prolong it no. first of all you know what i'm saying this would probably be another uh you know kind of a short type of ordeal unless it get good it should get it good, get good. Uh, but good. i came with a few questions really for and who i guess uh for me i think it'd be something that you know everybody can relate to everybody can uh get involved with first question i have three questions I think for I me have. Yeah, three questions. So y'all know they're like this this is gonna be a nice little banger. Okay, but time out. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. You're asking me the three questions? Uh, it's gonna be a a or like okay. General question, but hopefully okay. you give your answer, I give my answer. Okay, that's what I was and gonna ask. Like, people at home will probably say, you know something. Yeah, and then don't tell you don't hesitate to comment too. So comment, you know, your answer to some of this. Um, or you can follow us on uh Instagram um at mr made over you feel me? um yeah. and um and that way you can actually respond yeah. to some of these questions as well and inbox us or dm us rather um and we will uh one of us will respond yeah first question oh, is gosh. so far marriage has been blank I gotta go first. Jeez. Ladies first. That <laughs> he got that gender stuff. She never married a gentleman. So far, <laughs> <laughs> so far, marriage has been blank. <laughs> Take, take the lead no, 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 no. I mean, you know, um, so far, marriage has been eye awakening because I was going, wait, no, hold on, wait, wait, <laughs> because, um, starting out in our marriage, um, was rocky for, I'll say it was rocky for me 
specifically as coming into this thing as a woman um, who had a different outlook and a different time frame for marriage. Right. So um, throughout the course. Hold up. Oh, well, you skip as that. What was your time frame for marriage? When did like I had like jotted down on a sheet of paper? Uh. Like I wanted to be like kid by twenty five because this is when I was in the world now. So kid by twenty five, married by twenty eight, or other way around, married by twenty five, kid by twenty eight. Okay. And it was kid by twenty nine. Married by 30. <laughs> right? I mean, we could have flipped that. But yeah. that's so, neither here nor there. See how you, and so um, you always, he always, <laughs> hey, remember that last one? I told y'all he, he was shacking. We, we were shacking, boo. We were shacking. <laughs> Don't shack. Please. Do not shack. It's wasted time. Yeah, it's wasting time. Um, but it was eye awakening from moments of when we were living together and not being um, married when we had a child out of wedlock. All of that was eye awakening for me. And um, the process of falling into submission as a wife. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding those roles and understanding the roles of being a nurturing mother, right. having somebody like need, well, two people at that time needed me like 24 seven. And then if you bring in my bonus boys, that was like four kids, one summer, everybody needed. Yeah. yeah. So it was very eye awakening for me. Um, and it helped me to see the importance of being a woman mm. and the different hats that we have to juggle within the family unit. And so I started out, like I said, Rocky, because I didn't know how to be a wife. I didn't really understand the component of well, it. There was no handbook. There was no handbook for marriage. There was no handbook for kids. Only what other people had to say and sometimes that didn't work. Uh, um, oh. Because everybody wants to put their input into different things. So it was very challenging for me to be able to weed out um, what others had to say, what others had, you know, their opinions, their fact, whatever. So I had to weed out what worked for me as a mother, what worked for me as a wife, and then what worked for us as a complete family unit. And so now I can actually say the, like, duh, my eyes are open now because I'm now falling or I have fallen into the role with, um, I say minor challenges because now I'm actually understanding what it takes to be a wife and what it takes to be a mother of two girls that just act like that act just like me. Yeah. Um, I think marriage is marriage for me is um here we a, go a, a ongoing school. <laughs> learning, um, learning, learning. It, you, you're forever learning. I feel yes. like. And I think that when you stop learning, that's when you stop loving. Oh, yeah. That's good, babe. Because, like, I take pride in knowing my wife, like, knowing, like, the smallest of the smallest, like, <laughs> of what she's going to do when she comes in. And you know, and it's not, and it's not that she's predictable. I am so predictable. And it's not that you like most. Most people won't know your habits if they don't actually pay attention. To yeah, you pay. Yeah, you're just. And yeah, you just pay attention a lot. I I I really. I love the challenge of always getting to know something new within right. a person, and especially within. Your life partner, mm -hmm. it, it, it makes it even worthwhile. Like, why is this making me emotional? Jesus Christ! It, it it it's just one of those things that, for me, I I've always appreciated my wife for. Be I mean, even, even before she's my, wife, I've always appreciated yeah. who she is, what she is about. I've always seen her. For her, like I've never seen her. For most people, say she has a big butt. 
which you know is which is did you just say that which, or, or big posterior um however you want to uh, <laughs> shake it but <laughs> but for me i've always seen the heart of her and i've always i, I fell in love with the 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 essence of who she is and who she who she can be it's like i seen who she can be before even actually diving in to actually meet her um so for me marriage has been school it's it's like you go from kindergarten all the way <laughs> all the way up to college to you know other stuff like right. i i will i will forever 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 be learning my wife i will forever Aww. forever be learning my family and i i believe as a as head of the household you you have to take on the mm -hmm. learning role because the minute i and this is why i feel a lot of people fall into temptation mm -hmm. this is why a lot of people fall into cheating roles right this is why a lot of people fall out of love because they stop learning right and I, I like for me, I, I never want to stop chasing my wife. I never want to stop chasing Chase me, boo, chase me. chasing who <laughs> she is. Like, and I think like every day for me, it it is it, it's always going to be a Christmas. It's always going to be a gift. Okay. Because and, and, come on, I, I, I'm trying to put it on thick now, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> for me. Like I said, when, when when you stop learning, you stop loving. Yeah, and that's one thing I never want to do. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't get into this for a short a short term. Yeah, marriage. And We're when, gonna be changing each other diapers. You, you know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, the Lord take me on home. <laughs> that's too embarrassing, right there. Hold it in, girl. <laughs> nah, that's too much. Uh, but so for me, marriage has been schooling, and and and. I'll forever keep learning. Oh, that was so sweet, babe. Well, to God be the glory. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got tear. I did. A little misty out of it. All right. Yeah. Next question is, uh -oh. do you have to hide your truth to protect your spouse? Oh, you should not hide your truth. <laughs> you should not hide your truth. To protect your spouse or the person you like. <laughs> yeah, I'm messing with you. You're like, oh, here we go. And I say that because um, <laughs> that's a setup. It's not a setup. It is a setup. Okay, so in our 14 years, 14, 15 years, let's just say even 20. Okay, somewhere, but somewhere a little bit under twenty, close enough. Um, we have had instances where um, the truth went all the way set out, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, um, and it kind of put a wedge, and it caused um, some mistrust in the process. It caused some hurt. Um, and just overall, I'm not gonna say complications, but it was just it was it was tense moments. Yeah. Um, and so that's when you put that. And then, then he did that app, y'all, on my phone. I was like, I'm stalking you, boo. Don't <laughs> that's stalking. But um, to to be able to put me at ease. The things that you did start sharing was still difficult, but we could sort of talk it out or or tackle it almost head on. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the more you try to cover it up, um, it makes things it makes things hard, and I think it hurts more than if you just came out and tell the truth. Told the truth. Like, I think it would be more damaging to cover up that truth than to come out and say, this is what happened. Because I think, in, I mean, in every situation is different. But I know with us, 
because of the history that we had and because we were always on an on an honest path and we knew just about everything um and we are one of those unconventional couples there was nothing that he did not know about me prior to marrying me because we were friends for a long time Mm -hmm. um six seven years um before even meeting and becoming an official couple Uh. so with that history of close friendship um and a platonic relationship our trust was built on something else so then once we became like official official and married things that were happening within our marriage that I had to find out kind of on my own made it more challenging and made it more hurtful Mm -hmm. and I think it kind of lengthened like what may have been a shorter time frame if we would have kind of tackled it head on that makes sense I'm talking in a circle y'all because we'll yeah we're talking in a circle sorry not but I think for me oh um, here you go I believe all truth should be told Mm -hmm. but I also feel like it's a time and a place due to the fact that, you know, a lot of people like, well, you know, like you may be hiding this and hiding that. But a lot of times, like I take time to process stuff now. I'm a lot older now. So back when we were actually, yeah. you know, starting, you yeah. understand, like I had no blueprint of how to yeah. be we- a man. I had no blueprint. Right. Like for me. I was never uh, un- until I met my spiritual parents that said, son, you are supposed to put your wife first mm-hmm. over your children. Mm-hmm. Like for me, it was always put my children first mm-hmm. over my wife. So and, 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 and when I did that, it got me in trouble as far as different other stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was never taught how to be yeah. a male. I was never that like I was never taught this is what you do in a marriage. Right. This is what the these are the do's and the and, and the don'ts that you do in a marriage. Like there was no blueprint. Right. Back home, I was taught, okay, the only best chick is a new chick. <laughs> this is what I was taught back right. home. Right. So and, and and with being in the field that I was in, women were my crowd literally yeah that's what i was used to i i was used to the attention of right hooray or you right. know pray high praise from women yeah so to come into a a, a marriage and have to and have to yeah. suppress all that mm-hmm. it's like it's like I, I think mom put it the best when she said i came from the club to the church <laughs> and never looked back to the club <laughs> You now I understand not. when I when I came from the club to the church, it was and yeah. I wanted to look back and I wanted yeah. to go back, but something in me, and like, yeah. and I can't even explain it. And I, I I guess it's just one of those loyal things that mm-hmm. like once I'm in it, I'm in it. Yeah, to the end. Like I, once I'm sold on it, it's like okay, I'm for God, and and I don't care who cares. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I was in sin, I didn't try to hide it. Right. Here's my bottle. Here's my here, here's my weed. Come join me or or, or get out. <laughs> but um, truth should always be brought to the front. To I, yeah. I, I, a lot of things are sometimes difficult to talk about. That's why mm-hmm. a lot of times I process like, okay, I don't want to tell her this before <laughs> she goes to work, and then she goes to work with this on her head, and then come back home. Like I wait until a time where she has like days off. And then why? <laughs> then if you pay attention, I will say, okay, babe, this Let's, is what we need to talk about. Right. This yeah. is what we need to deal with. But there was one point where you didn't do that, and you would, we would have tough conversations prior to work, or we would have tough conversations while I was at work, and yeah. because I was in a different arena yeah. and had that a, that ability. So it has not always been to where we waited until the right time, but Mm -hmm. through growth and through understanding one another, we have been able to now kind of attack when 
things need to be said. And then another thing, I'm a very emotional person, <laughs> very emotional yeah. person. Um, and I can go from one extreme to the next. So um, it is always, um, he does temperature checks. I'll just call it like that. Um, the temperature checks. And then that kind of preps me like, okay, we got to have a serious conversation, but then it keeps my mind from kind of wondering because it's like, boom, I'm gonna drop this little temperature check and then just kind of get me thinking. So then I can actually be ready to, um, be ready for that conversation and have an input versus me, um, tensing up as I used to because yeah. truth from him um, because of past relationships and, and past things that I've experienced the truth sometimes it hurt I mean that is a true statement um, it hurts but um, I had to learn to not shut down I had to learn to not be tense and then learn to sit in that hot seat, yeah. whether it was truth coming from me or listening to the truth that came from you. So I, I really want to like pull that across is this was not always this is what we did because we went from being very truthful friends, open about every single thing to yeah. when marriage came. It was kind of like because eh. in marriage you have. Um, or I remember people saying, well, you don't tell every, you don't tell your husband everything. Yeah. And we had already, <laughs> we had already been there. You know, you don't tell them how many people you've been with and did it too late. <laughs> Y'all should have told me that before because I had already did all that. Yeah, so the there place. is right. And everything else. So there was nothing or there is nothing that he does not know about past relationships, past everything. Like we, we, we did it to the point where we it, showed Exactly. Yeah. Who they were. Yeah. Went we on our Facebook. Friends. We went down. <laughs> and we did. But it was one of those things that you know it made us at ease. Yeah. Because then know? it made it. It and then if somebody popped up and we kind of knew like all right let's just watch this part like let's watch this person and what I mean by let's watch let's make sure. And a lot of it was from my side is let me make sure that whoever this guy is, is not um, being disrespectful to my husband or to my marriage, and especially when we got like when we got really serious. So it became more so of a, hey, these are the people. And then, hey, yeah, I had to block such and such. such. So we are even still open about um, a lot of things that I'll just say some couples won't even tread in yeah. and i think that comes from um i know a lot of couples who won't give no one a password oh yeah we yeah they, uh phone or or even dms like yeah we we you know, get like, it yeah my wife was like man this girl <laughs> my who is who who, who, who <laughs> but for me and, yeah. and, and i hope a lot of men learn from that yeah like if the cover is off. There's nothing. There's to nothing to hide. Up. There's yeah. Nothing to hide. And I, I, I mean, I ask, but I, I will say that women um, that are in a serious relationship or courting or dating and things of that nature, it's not cool to go through a guy's phone. Um, whether you have, because I, I used to do that. I did it to your phone. I did it to some other people that I dated phones. Um, because all it does some, a lot of times is make you insecure and then it stirs up tension. So like when we, when we heard first that we should not be locking our phones and things like that, we, and we really locked the phone cause of the, at that time it was cause, of, um, riot cause riot would go in the phones, but, um, he has my code. I have his code, my fingerprints on his phone, his fingerprints on my phone. We have, uh, I can see emails. I mean, he, but you don't look at my, you don't like. I'm not, I'm not really that person. Like, well, I get all of your notifications though. So I have no, it's I like. Mean, like, even if I did, even swing. if I, if I did, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just not that. I, I've yeah. never been that go through the phone type person. Like, no, he has not. I no. Think I, I think I've probably done that probably like once or twice. But you then, went through my time or somebody nah, else's phone? Somebody else's oh, okay. phone. Because you know, at that point, some Trust. stuff wasn't adding up, right? And it did. It came, and like, that's why but, we. But that's why we do it. So, so, but after after that, I just said, I me, mean, you know, something. If I said, I, I, I think I'm to the point now. I'm a good man. 
Uh, he's a good man. Doggone good looking too. He has. Um, also, but I I <laughs> I believe like anybody who does me wrong and we decide to part ways, it's bad for them. Because for me, I'm gonna give it my all. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm gonna give it a hundred percent. Like you're gonna get a hundred percent of me as far yeah. as husband wise. I'm not a husband, I'm not your average husband no. that well, I don't have to run home to 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 watch a game, watch a show. No, he does or not. <coughs> do all this type of different other stuff, like because like I believe in family first. I yeah. believe in wife you, first. <laughs> I believe in you know happy spouse, happy yeah. life, not happy wife, but happy spouse, yeah, happy life. But like it's just certain things like I don't do. What other men do Right you don't And, and I, I can say that And and that has That has helped me And that's that eye awakening part too Where it It has helped me to One go from Our moments of When we had those issues With the trust there To now being able to trust you Like And, and like I said Ladies He put everything on my phone I didn't ask I don't Big or any of that It's like I get all the notifications And I just don't know how to use my phone to turn them all off But I get all the notifications And I just swipe them closed if they're, And then too it just helps Business wise just in case That there's a message He needs to see and then I catch it And I'm like hey you need to check this notification So it kind of helps there But then it helps me as far as trusting Because that was one issue that I had yeah, well, um, yeah, With men Yeah men in general so it wasn't just relation like boyfriend girlfriend type relationships it was just men overall where um the lack of trust that i had so um yeah so things such as the um was it the family finder family yeah. app um that so a lot of times you know if he's gone too long and i need to see where he is um because i need something it's like, hey, where are you? And then I might check the app just to see to make sure he's not like busy or at work. Um, so I use it for things like that. I don't really use it a lot to see what's going on because that trust is there. Yeah. And the and yeah, yeah, and we've yeah. built a whole lot. And then I mean, us being able to come to the table and be honest. Yeah. And so, I'm far I'm far from who I used to be. So Yeah, you are. <laughs> That, that, that guy's gone. Uh, question number three. Last question. question. Number three, question number three. What is the most important role for a gender role? Ooh, the most important role for a gender role. So for women, who the most important? Man, it's, I can't just give just one. Okay, I'll go here. So, and I'm going to talk, let me talk married first, because then I can process kind of like if you are single. Okay. So as a man, and I, I got a couple, the most important things for a woman gender role, um, nurturing, I'm going to say the number one thing is to be nurturing um how do i get that though okay simple not simple um that comes from i'm gonna say for me to understand what i was supposed to give out i had to first understand what i had to put in myself um because and this can go for the married woman Mm -hmm. Or the single woman We first have to find out who we are um, How did I do that All right, I listened to um, A lot of podcasts um, Not pod Well I did listen to some sermons And some podcasts on um, Building self confidence um, So I had to learn to nurture myself First before that I can nurture My husband and nurture um, Our children Now the nurturing for him is a whole, whole lot different because he is the unconventional male. So if he's sick, he's not the man that's going to whine. He the man is like, just, I'm going to just sweat this out and I'm going to fix my own food and I'm going to do what I got to do. So the nurturing for him is just, I've learned. 
What? Ain't this what you're supposed to do? What? No, men lay down and they whine. But he's a horrible patient too, and he probably would say that I'm a horrible nurse. <laughs> I've said that. But yeah, you have said that. Literally, have said that. You you told mom and dad that I think yeah. Yeah. somebody. Yeah, I think it was mom and dad. But um, so nurturing for him looks like, or nurturing for my spouse looks like me being there for him, me listening to what he has to say and even in the moments of um misunderstanding or not understanding at all um still sitting and being able to actually hear him out that does not happen overnight okay does not does not happen overnight it did not (laughs) happen overnight for us so isn't i don't think that what that don't happen overnight just don't um and then nurturing for the uh huh. That didn't happen overnight. Like just to be able to, that don't come overnight. For me, it did. You different now. So two J. Just different, man. He different. Uh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> See, uh, <laughs> that's not. It's not. It's not a gospel song, honey. Um. But that would be the first thing. So learn to nurture yourself, learn to pour into yourself first, whether you are a single woman or a woman that is currently married and you feel like you're losing yourself. I also did a lot of affirmations um, and looking up affirmations as they apply to me because everybody affirmations, everybody do them, everybody have them. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that affirmation is for you. So I had to learn to do affirmations for myself and a lot of them I I wrote them on a mirror and I would look at them almost every day. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that is the number one thing is learning um, the importance of um, nurturing and you had, and then you gotta listen to the father in order to know what to do for both of them. So um, really learning and understanding the needs of my spouse and also my kids. Now, if you're a single woman, you still can actually listen to, you know, the Holy Spirit as he guides you into how to uh, maintain nurturing yourself and building yourself up. So that way, when you do get married, you don't lose who you are. You don't lose your own identity. Mm -hmm. So I think I just narrowed that down to one. Guess it's on me. Oh, here he go. He finna be all philosophical. All right, man. Pull a chair up. Pay attention. You finna? Okay, I'll be back with one more. Pay, 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 pay attention, man. You got coffee? It's right there. Pay attention, man. Um, pay attention, man. As my uh, as my mom <laughs> say, I'm only gonna say this one time. <laughs> <laughs> one time. Uh-oh. Listen up and listen good. I'm about to drop some nuggets. I hear a lot of people say, you know, they said Mo is one He's of He's wonderful. You had the awesome. best husband ever. This, 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 Can that. I just like brag on you real quick? All right. So, like, everybody at my school, right? <laughs> Y'all, when I literally say they absolutely love my husband. Well, everybody, period, just love my husband. And so, um, he... I tease him that he has booze at my job um, because uh, uh, gorgeous. He's handsome. The women love him. I am perfectly 100% okay with that. I am confident in myself and he come home to me. So I'm cool with that. First of all, ain't nothing worth. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Don't wreck, even. Wreck yeah. And home, he's not going to so. wreck his home. So uh, wreck our home. But um, a lot of times I call him unconventional and I know I've said that. So I want to kind of explain to people what that looks like in our marriage. Unconventional. I mean, he cooks, he cleans, he has done the kid's hair. He has, um, (laughs) yeah, he has done the kid's hair. He has, oh gosh, he irons, he, you name it. I don't think there's anything that you haven't done. No. No. That I can like really think of that. Think about what a woman would do. Breastfeed. 
Breastfeed. Okay, it. you have it. You I can't. have taken the milk in the bottle and laid it up against your chest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You put it up against your chest and like, oh yeah, that's it. Um, that's it but that's it. That's I call it. him <laughs> unconventional because he does a lot of the things that a woman or the the gender roles of women would do. Um, and so in that instance, like stay at home dad um, is a is a big one because a lot of the things that he does, people kind of people in our culture. Wow. Um, Sean upon you know a guy that, a black male I'm just gonna put out there wow. that is at home because the stereotypical thing is they playing the game all day they're not doing nothing wrong oh, wrong wish. wrong wrong okay my husband plays the game but yet he's he teaching both the kids fixing lunch cafeteria staff janitorial staff he does it all so that's why I call him unconventional because there is nothing that um he does not do to be able to help and alleviate a lot of the pressure off of me because I am working outside of the house. And then if there's something that I need at work, i.e. I left food, he brought a Christmas tree that I wanted to donate little things like that. It's rarely a no. Um, but you know, I also too, okay, that can wait. So there are some things as well that I don't take for granted. And in this moment of thankfulness, um, I always appreciate what he does. So I never take that for granted. But if I say I need it, he's going to be there to do it regardless. No questions asked. Um, unless just something is keeping him, um, from getting it done, which is, is rare. Is there anything that, there's nothing that I've asked and you haven't done it. Yeah. That. Yeah. So that's why I call him unconventional. So I wanted to kind of say that before he got into his piece. So you guys understood what I meant by our marriage is unconventional because I have a husband who is actually unconventional. Oh, I'm gonna cry again. Um, God, but, um, he goes out of his way to make sure that, um, all of our kids, all five of them, five of them have exactly what they need um and then i have everything that i need all the while um running businesses and making sure that he is um is good i just wanted to kind of put that out there so people understood that all right okay your turn sorry all right now men listen up listen up this is how you do all the things that she just named off. <laughs> Simple. I've said it before. I know what you're going to say. Now I've said it again. I love my wife <laughs> unto God. Yeah. I don't love her off what she does. Or doesn't do. Or doesn't do. <laughs> Um, for me, I put her first because she deserves to be first. She is. You're gonna first. make me cry. Um, me choosing to be choosing. This is choosing. Not that I couldn't get a job or anything like that, because I could literally show you the <laughs> acting gigs that I've had offers for. Yeah. But still didn't pursue because I didn't think that would be beneficial. I didn't think that would be the right thing. I mean, high dollar amount, too. Like, yeah. Well, I tell you, high dollar amount. Yes, I am an actor. So yeah. I have acting roles in my in, in, in my uh, acting uh, Emails. portfolio. Yeah, portfolio, um, too. I, 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 I've done a lot. I'm a person that you will really want to hire because I'm loyal to you mm -hmm. and I'm a hard worker. Right. But I'm more loyal to my wife than anything. Nothing comes before her except God. So if she's not giving a certain thing or she's not acting a certain way, and I think that's what marriage is about. Like, since you didn't uh, say hello to me today, <laughs> Uh, you know some. I'm gonna right. let the trash run over today, and you gonna <laughs> you gonna smell every bit. But for me, I don't yes. believe in that. Yeah. And, and, and it's not that trash. I can't do that. 
I don't do the tit for tat. First of all, I'm grown. Yeah, you did. Yeah, no, and we and for me, if you love your life, why get married? Mm-hmm. If you're not going to put in the time to do what is necessary for your wife, right? Your wife comes first. At first, I didn't know that until my spiritual parents. And once I found out what the rule book really says about marriage. And you know, I, I I also encourage people to read the uh, what five love language, yeah, and mm-hmm. and and figure out what your spouse's uh, love language is. Mm-hmm. You know, you could be thinking that is is physical when it should it, it could just be act of servant or or or, mm-hmm. or, or, or different other stuff, right. touch or you know different other stuff like that. But I love her unto God, like. I don't I, I don't go off what she does. I don't go off if she had a bad day, she treated me like this, so you know something she gonna cook today. <laughs> For what? What's the point? What like why put more strain on a marriage relationship where you can just make it better? Right. We like you you you're supposed to be helping one another, not dividing right. and, and, and going against the grain. That's why a lot of marriages don't last because Mm-hmm. The order of marriage is off Right First of all Nine times out of ten God ain't first Ain't right Cause if he was first You'd be loving that wife Unto him And mm-hmm. nobody else I can care less about What anybody else God am I doing this right Right Am I in the, Am I treating Or talking to Like From the smallest thing Am I talking to my wife The right way Yeah it, 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 Is my mannerisms or, or Am I treating her The way that is pleasing in your sight, in in your sight. For me, that's what that that that's what a gender role is. Number one, to hear from God mm-hmm. and to love your wife according to what is pleasing in His sight. Mm-hmm. That's the role of the man, and and that, for me, that's the role of anybody who's married. Right. Or when you do anything, work your job unto God. Right. You know, like do everything unto God. For me, everything is unto God for real. Mm-hmm. It was never like that, but for me, it's better that way. Yeah, because I don't have to worry about what she does. It's about what I do. Mm-hmm. Focus on me, like like what matters. What comes from me to her? Is it tearing her down? Is it I, I don't enable her no more? <laughs> Because I used to just do everything. So now I'm to the point, okay, you can do this. You're good. But I don't know. But yeah, you can. Yeah. Babe, I a lot did of, it. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of, in the beginning, it was a lot of enabling. And I was, basically, it was enabling me to self-destruct. Yeah. Um, and so now that we both understand um, our roles, um, and I, I mean, there we're not perfect in them. Um, we still fall short, but at the end of the day, we we give grace to each other like the Father gives us grace, yeah. and then we strive to not uh, abuse that grace um, and do the same thing repeatedly on purpose. I'll say that too, because some people do things um, on purpose. So we, uh, Vindictive. yeah, so we, we never, but we never were a couple that did tit for tat either. No. Um, we didn't do tit for tat. We, it was just, we not going to say nothing. <laughs> and then when we, uh, when, uh well, it was, it was more so, yeah, no. And I, and what I mean by that, no, you did not argue, but it was more so you processed in a quiet manner and I didn't understand that. And so now that I understand, okay. You be like, what? What? I ain't just talking to me. Just say it. Just say, what you, say what you need to no, say. Number say one, what you I need know to say. the power of words. But you sing that song to me. Say what you need to say. And when you say <laughs> something, yeah. you can't get it back. You can't. And so that. I don't go for the feelings to get you in trouble. Say what you need to say. I'm going to sing the whole song. No, I'm not playing. I don't even know the whole song. But that that is definitely something that we, um, what we have been doing is understanding the dynamics of the order and keeping God first um, and allowing him to work on us instead of like me working on him and whatever I don't like and vice versa. It's like, all right, you got attitude day? And he probably be like, Lord, just work on us. 
<laughs> I'm a praying person. Yeah. But, you know, and a lot of times we have to, you know, we have to go about doing things that way. Um, but we just have to make sure that at the end of the day, um, we understand our roles. Yeah. Um, and it may vary day to day because um, some days he may need to do everything that like the washing the dishes, the cooking, the taking the girl's hair down. And then I may just come in to to kind of kick back and, and chill out. So sometimes our roles may reverse, but we still don't allow that to um to change what that primary role is. Yeah. So I know, you know, if I said, well, yeah, you know how to wash hair and, and do a ponytail. Okay. That does not mean anything. That just lets people know my husband does more than just like sitting there twiddling his thumb. He'll take some braids loose and put the ponytails in there and call it a day. He just needs a certain kind of ponytail holder. That's it. Uh, <laughs> But um, smooth that thing out. You do, <laughs> but just know that at the end of it all, um, is we have to understand where we stand and who we are. And this is not only just in marriage; this is also in dating because you still have roles um, in that process of, of dating. And I'll say, if it's somebody you're trying to be serious with and you're going to the next level and thinking about marriage or talking about marriage, um, you want to still maintain those roles. And if you do have, um, a spouse or a significant other or somebody that you're courting that, um, goes above and beyond because they understand what their role is, mm -hmm. women allow them to do it. Um, don't demean that man because he's doing too much. Don't, um, hinder him because he is just literally doing what he knows or what has been given to him as a man to do. And then, uh, if your spouse, significant other, boo, whatever, does not, align with the gender roles that have been laid out here don't go comparing him to my husband because my husband is totally one of a kind there is probably somebody else like that out there we know a couple of people that are like nah. that but <laughs> for this age bracket we're in um older men yeah but i'm telling you he do not compare do not say see babe, you need to do that no mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. he is going your husband your spouse will do what they have to do when it comes down to your household the things that we do, it works for our household. It may not work for our sister's household. And a lot of things we do, it don't work for. We are an unconventional couple, meaning we do things that most couples don't do because we started out with a very strong friendship um, in the very beginning. And also, ladies, let, 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 let me give you a little tidbit. Uh oh, um. I'm, I'm going to say this once, and I ain't going to say it again. Um, Listening to the late Dr. Miles Monroe. Oh, yeah. Broke down to me. Bro well, in, in this message he was teaching, he said that men don't need love. Now, at first I said, that what? is crazy. We do need love. We need somebody to love us. But... Listen, and th th this is all Bible. You go look it up on your own. I think it's in Ephesians or something like that. When it talks about how the wife should love her husband. Mm -hmm. But then it turns around and says how the wife should respect her husband. Yes. Men collate. That's it, right? Good. When men <laughs> collate. Love with respect. We love respect. We love it when you encourage us in things that we do. We love it when you pat us on the back. That's what keeps us. It keeps us going. 
I like how you put up those blinds. <laughs> oh, oh, you do. <laughs> Wait till I see the ones that put up in the girls' room. You know, stuff like that. Like, we love that. You you hung that mirror real nice. You know what I'm saying? And it could be a little crooked, you know? Come back behind us while we ain't there and fix it. Don't fix it in front of us. Yes, do not fix it in front Uh, of us. (laughs) I just change it. Leave it alone. Uh, Don't touch it. But respect. Yeah. That's all we ask for is respect and yeah. a good hot meal. Uh, <laughs> but and yes, I I cook too. So we we both cook. Yeah, fire but cookers. I'm gonna, cookers. You know, you know pit master junior. But you know, tweet is on. But this concludes this gender role. Um, I don't even know if we should call it gender roles part two. I feel like it should be something else. We question stuff. We got a little deep. Those gender role questions. Oh, okay. My bad. So uh, this concludes this. Thank you. Gender Thank y'all for listening. Uh, I'm Mr. Madeover. And I am Mrs. Madeover. And like we always say, keep God first. And the rest shall be added. Bye.